from the Center for Advanced uh, Systems Understanding, CASUS in, in short. Attila Kangi is a theoretical and computational physicist interested in various aspects of quantum many body theory, quantum dynamics, material science, and machine learning for the modeling of phenomena in matter induced by extreme electromagnetic fields, temperatures, and pressures. He is currently the acting research team leader of the researcher Matter Under Extreme Conditions at CASUS. Uh, he began his uh, academic career with PhD in chemistry from the University of California, Irvine, in uh, 2011. From 2011 to uh, 2017, he was a postdoctoral researcher at the Max Planck Institute of Microstructure Physics in, in Halle, Germany. Until 2020, he was a staff member at the Center for Computing Research, Sandia National Laboratories, USA, where he developed modeling frameworks for matter under extreme conditions. And Attila will be talking about data-driven surrogate modeling of matter under extreme conditions. Welcome, Attila. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, and yeah, so my name is Attila Kanji, as I was introduced, and so I'm currently the acting research team leader of the research area, Matter Under Extreme Conditions, at CASUS, the Center for Advanced Systems Understanding. And I'd like to give you uh, a small insight um, into, into CASUS, into the, into the Center for Systems Understanding, for Advanced Systems Understanding. So we are, in that sense, a European initiative because we are a joint German-Polish institute. And as the name implies, in my research area, matter under extreme conditions, we deal with that type of matter. And the figure here on the title slide gives you a preview of what you will see later in the talk. It illustrates a snapshot of what is called uh, warm dense matter, which is currently one of the grand challenges in physics. And at the same time, it is a prime example of a complex system, which is the focus of the work that we do at, at CASUS. So on the next slide, yes, um, uh, just a few words on, on our center. So um, the Center for Systems for Advanced Systems Understanding is a center for complex system science. And we develop digital solutions that can be used across disciplines. Um, and currently, we have five focus areas. And these are first systems biology, earth system science, we have digital health, autonomous vehicles, and as mentioned earlier in my introduction, matter under extreme conditions. And at CASUS, we deliver uh, digital solutions for solving complex problems. And the principle behind uh, our center is to bring together scientists from various disciplines who work together on common mathematical, on a common mathematical understanding, and who devise solutions to complex systems. And I'm today presenting one aspect of this, which is matter under extreme conditions, but there are different, as I mentioned in the previous slide, other research areas. And the common denominator is that we are connected by the mathematical models, high performance computing um, solutions, uh, and other common solutions that we share across research areas. And in this way, we can impact science, society, and industry at the same time. So now on the next slide, um, coming or focusing in on my own research area. So in, in my research area, our research objective is to develop a data-driven surrogate modeling framework for a matter under extreme conditions, such that we can develop digital twins of complex systems. And when we talk about matter under extreme conditions, we refer to phenomena that are induced by strong electromagnetic fields, high temperatures and pressures. And on a fundamental science level, uh, shown on the left, prob probing and simulating extreme conditions is essential for understanding astrophysical objects, such as the interiors of planets and stars. In the middle, in terms of material science, this research area propels the discovery of, of unexplored materials properties. For instance, 
the walls of fusion reactors shown in the upper figure here, they are exposed to harsh conditions. And understanding effects such as helium bubble formation shown in the bottom figure is a key challenge and has a great impact on finding materials that are, in this case, more stable against radiation. And lastly, from a technological point of view, extreme conditions occur in the heating process of inertial confinement fusion capsules on their path towards ignition. Understanding this process is another key challenge. And equally important is the diagnostics of high energy density experiments, which relies on a strong interplay with simulations. These experiments are, for example, conducted at our partner institutions, such as the Hyper facility that is located at the European XFVL at AC in Hamburg. Now, this is the motivation why we do this research. And now coming into to our research, um, studying matter under extreme conditions is highly challenging because it requires us to take into account the physics across various length and time scales. So on the one hand, on the far right, on this figure, we have device scale simulations. These are methods such as particle and cell or computational fluid dynamics. Those operate on macroscopic scales and have proven to be very useful. However, they address electron correlation and other quantum effects insufficiently. On the far left of this plot, we have electronic structure methods such as quantum Monte Carlo or density functional theory. And those capture electron correlation accurately, but their computational cost limits them to microscopic scales. And our effort or our goal is to bridge these length and time scales. And this is needed to enable a multi-scale simulation framework of complex systems. And we tackle this challenge uh, with a team of scientists that has complementing expertise. And I'm acknowledging um, my team here above, uh, showing uh, their names and, and their pictures. Um, and our domain expertise includes me methods that are shown here. Those are strong field QED, quantum Monte Carlo, and density functional theory, as I mentioned earlier, as well as reduced models such as quantum hydrodynamics and average atom models, all the way down to large scale molecular dynamics techniques. And our proposed solution is a data driven machine learning framework for multi scale simulations that maintains accuracy throughout length and time scales and comes at a negligible computational cost. So the main requirement for digital twins is a rapid inference of high fidelity simulations data, which can only be achieved with, the, with those machine learning surrogate models that we develop. And in the following, uh, in the remaining time, I will highlight some of our recent research achievements from small to large scales. And I will mainly focus um, on our project on developing a surrogate, a machine learning surrogate for density functional theory calculations. So on the next slide, uh, one example of um, our work that we do on the small scales. So the, so the input here um, is uh, on the quantum level that is, for example, needed to accurately describe the interactions of electrons. And this is what we do here in this project based on uh, the method, a method called path integral quantum Monte Carlo. We constructed a machine learning surrogate, uh, in, a, in, certain, in other words, a neural network model that describes electronic correlations. And, and that is shown on the lower left figure. And to date, this is the most accurate and efficient model to predict the signals that are encountered, measured in X-ray scattering experiments. And this is uh, what we published recently. Uh, and that's one example that we do what, on work that we do on small scales. Uh, the second example that I want to just go over very quickly is that we have now started looking into inhomogeneous states in matter under extreme conditions, in other words, in warmness matter, and using again techniques such as quantum Monte Carlo and density functional theory, we have now predicted 
novel features in the spectrum. Uh, in, in, in particular, these features show a pronounced dependence on a temperature, which is um, a, a yet not solved problem in the diagnostics of uh, meta and extreme conditions or Romans matter. So the pronounced temperature dependence of our predictive signals is highly useful in further constraining temperature diagnostics. Uh, now, after this, I'd like to come to the focus of my talk, which is um, the data-driven framework to replace standard electronic structure calculations. And the framework we develop is called the Materials Learning Algorithms, MALA. And it is developed in collaboration with the Sandia and the Oak Ridge National Labs. And based on neural networks, we bypass the computational bottleneck of standard density functional theory calculations. And this framework here is, for example, useful for modeling matter under extreme conditions that is found, as I had mentioned in my introduction, in the interior of giant gas planets. Uh, so this project, uh, or just uh, the first paper on this project has just recently been published and the entire code is being developed uh, open source and you can find the GitHub location of our project here if you're interested in having a look. And um, let me just quickly now recap the problem statement. So um, when we talk about solving the electronic structure problem from first principles, we have to begin with the coupled electron ion Hamiltonian. And without going into the details, I'm just stating that usually we work within what is called the bone oppenheimer approximation. That means we can neglect the quantum nature of the nuclei and just deal with the quantum nature of the electrons. But still, this problem is still computationally too expensive. And the state of the art here is um, therefore to perform calculations in, in a scheme of coupled dense, of coupling density functional theory with classical molecular dynamics. So here, uh, in the in the scheme shown below, in the sketch shown below, we basically solve for the electronic structure in density functional theory. Um, so in quantum mechanics, using a few assumptions, and this is used or to compute the forces that act on the nuclei to drive a classical molecular dynamics simulation. And even in uh, within density functional theory. Solving the electronic structure problem is still too costly. With the current HPC systems, those DFT MD calculations are still limited to a few hundred atoms. Nevertheless, DFT has in fact developed into the standard method to solve the electronic structure problem in chemistry and material science. Um, and on the left, you see up to 2013 number of papers published using DFT, and it's in the kilo papers. And furthermore, uh, not so much well-known fact maybe is that DFT calculations have become uh, the overall one of the largest computational costs in the utilization of academic HPC resources. So you can see that uh, the blue area, um, a quarter or 29% material science as well as physics and chemistry portions mainly use DFT calculations. So there's great potential in speeding up DFT calculations using data-driven methods such as machine learning. And this is what we do. And now in the remaining few minutes, I'll go a bit more into the details of our method. So uh, skipping over what here the background on DFT is. So what we, our uh, framework, our Amala framework, uh, consists of four main steps. The first one is data generation. Then we go to pre-processing. Then we go to training of neural network and inference. And finally, post-processing. And I'll just go very quickly over these steps. So we basically generate our input data using standard DFT calculations. Uh, and for this, we use the quantum espresso code. And in particular, we're interested in this quantity called local density of states, LDOS. 
And in this example, we generated this quantity for aluminum close at the melting point. And at the melting point, it will be at a solid phase and a liquid phase. And here, these um, two boxes um, shows the, uh, the figure here shows the simulation boxes. And in the pre-processing stage, we convert the data, put it onto a, glit, onto a grid using a certain descriptor. In this case, it's the snap descriptor using the LAMPS package. And so we represent our data on a spatial grid. And then we train our neural network using um, PyTorch uh, and uh, using Horobot um, to, for scaling on HPC resources and Optuma library for high performance computing, uh, sorry, for hyperparameter optimization. And finally, we can train a network and we can perform inference and we can compute all the standard uh, quantities of um, what you would usually get uh, from a DFT calculation uh, in the post-processing step. And I'm just now moving on towards, since my time is uh, running out, um, we can basically compute all standard quantities like the density of states, the electronic density, and all the energy contributions. And um, just moving on to my summary slide. Um, so we will continue developing our data room framework, and it will be useful for various applications such as the induced dynamics in X-ray scattering experiments, UltraFrost, energy transfer between electrons and ions. We will be able to compute phase diagrams of mixtures that we find in planets, and we will be able to look at the kinetics of magnetoelastic phase transitions under the presence of electromagnetic fields. And with this, I'd like to finish, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Attila. Very, very fascinating talk, uh, especially for me. I'm a theoretical physicist. I spend uh, years and years <laughs> computing local density of states of various materials and, uh, and other things. Uh, inc incidentally, back in, uh, I liked your slide 5 and 25, repeated, uh, where you uh, assume uh, simulating the, the whole device, nano-electronic device. And uh, as is a sort of short anecdote, back in 1995 in Taiwan, there was the first HPC a Asia conference. And I, I presented a talk entitled The Rational Nanoelectronic nano Device Design, the definition of another grand challenge problem. And that was precisely this, and, and we are still working on that. So, so it uh, gives me enormous uh, sort of uh, personal pleasure to see that you know the progress has been made over tens of years and now i would like to ask you we will have a, a fascinating talk uh, tomorrow uh, in the middle of the day of, of our conference day by uh, by roberto carr so could you uh, uh, explain how much uh, your method mali uh, malia is different from carparinello method so, um, so yeah, I'm very much aware of Roberto Carr's work, and I'm actually looking forward to his talk. Um, so our project is related to his uh, project in the sense that we are um, working on the step one, one step before um, Carpar Carparanello molecular dynamics is being applied. So we are working at this density functional theory level, yes. and we're speeding up that. Whereas carpal molecular dynamics uh, then um, goes one step further and does um, larger scale simulations um, in a molecular dynamics fashion. So in that sense, what can be done is that our the method we develop can be used to generate more efficient in a more efficient fashion training data that can be used to run carpal error. Uh, molecular dynamic simulations. No, this is very so that's good. that's how this is related. Uh, check if you have uh, any questions. Uh, yes, we have uh, one question. Could quantum machine learning methods, operational quantum algorithms, be combined with your approach to materials uh, modeling? Question from that's a very good question. Um, 
because we are actually working on this. It's absolutely can be used. I mean, we are currently using a uh, classical neural network, right? The, the neural networks that um, classical machine learning. And absolutely, we could, we are actually very much interested in applying um, quantum machine learning to our uh, application. So this is something we're actually actively working on. Uh, and I believe there is a uh, potential in speeding up uh, or in Attila, Attila, there is a great potential for collaboration between Polish scientists and the uh, Casus uh, researchers. Casus, uh, if you have noticed on the on the map, is positioned right on this uh, at the spot of, of, of our border with uh, Germany in Gerlitz. It's uh, maybe just across the bridge, you know, it takes you two minutes to go from Poland to Casus <laughs> in a absolutely, absolutely yeah. beautiful, beautiful uh, ancient uh, city of uh, Gerlitz, uh, which has got hundreds of, of uh, uh, historical sites uh, listed by UNESCO. It's an inc incredible place. So uh, for sure you live in the, in the, and work in, the, in a very, very exciting place, beautiful. It's a very new center and uh, it's all of and the, the collaboration between polish centers and and the casus are encouraged so let's hope we'll, we'll, we'll engage some some uh, good uh, research uh, collaborations and uh, i wish you all the best so thank you very much attila